Well, welcome back to Spay Fishing with John. This particular spot here, uh, I typically at higher flows fish from the other side, and that's kind of more instinctual. It's a little counterintuitive to fish from this side, but at low flows, that's, that's the program. And uh, sometimes you just have to try, uh, if you think, oh, that, maybe that'll work. You gotta try it before you really know. You gotta get out there and, and, and swing it. So from this side, we've got a pretty steep bank here that we're standing on. The water's pretty heavy at the top, but when you get out and fish it, it swings a lot slower than you think, and it, it holds fish. The, the, the bottom of the river is a lot of that groovy, volcanic ledge rock, and there's all kinds of little nooks and crannies. Classic piece of water. So we're gonna fish it from river left. I'm gonna skirt the edge of this bank here uh, what's critical in these kind of spots is D-loop management. I'm not going to do a double spay. The D-loop of a double spay penetrates the bank too much, so I'm going to snap T my way through this, and uh, that's, that's the best cast here because a snap T D-loop just doesn't penetrate the bank, so it gives me more room to make a D-loop, and, and it also gives me that nice angled cast downstream. Equipment-wise, uh, this particular run, it's not real deep, but it's fairly heavy water. So I've got 10 feet of T14 uh, skadge line. It's a, it's a 525 on the, it's the new Reddington Cromer. This is the 12 and a half foot seven weight. Awesome little rod. And for tight spots like this, even though this is big water or bigger water, for tight spots, I love short rods. So 12 and a half foot seven weight, perfect tool for this job. Uh, 10 feet of T14, I got a black deuce wiggle so we'll see if we can make this work. I know what you're thinking, this looks pretty fast, but I actually caught fish on a short, short cast here at the top of this. Eventually we'll be casting over this heavy water. I lied, I am doing a double spay here, but just on these short casts. Just a little soft spot right here. This little soft spot will hold fish. Do a quick man, I'm gonna hold my rod out really slow my fly down here. And really swing across this heavy choppy water quite slow. Now I'm ripping out line but I can strip a couple feet of my skagit line in. The speed of the skagit line they're so heavy you just kind of pop the tip of the rod, cast with the tip and still shoot line. The time you're in tight quarters, I don't feel like you have to have the whole head of the line out to make it work. By stripping line in, it just makes my D loop smaller, which means shallower, which means it's not going to penetrate the bank quite as much. Try that one again. Oh, I just got grabbed. Huh. I just got, just got bit. Well, I was swinging pretty fast, so fish didn't have really much time to latch onto it. I can just place my line out further from me. Which allows me to cast a D-loop that's, that's shallower and doesn't penetrate quite as far. And once I get below this 
tree right here, I can start snap teeing. It's what I call D-loop management, D-loop awareness. Always got to be looking for where that D-loop's going to go. I, think I got room for a snap tee here. There we go. When those fish want to hide, the river's low and clear. Those fish want to hide. This is great water for them to hide in. And they'll bite it in here too. Otherwise, we wouldn't be fishing it. Let's add a little bit more line here. I get asked a lot about line management a lot when I'm shooting line and my general rule is I'll strip in till the line's hanging down to about my rod tip, which it is now, which for me is about five big strips. Then I grab the line and I just strip the rest in. I'm just going to hold this in my bottom hand like that, right on my index finger. And I really don't have to do much, it just comes out. Boom. Just comes right out. Occasionally that happens. After every cast, I look at my reel. Because sometimes the line will catch around the handle or around the reel. It just happens when you're shooting line. So I just give it a quick look. You know, maybe one out of ten times there's a little tangle here. Once in a while it'll, it'll tangle around your first stripping guide. Just no way to avoid it. So you just have to take a look. The best mend comes after a good cast. Mending a tight line is a key to a good mend. And in this case, because the water's pretty heavy, I'm gonna make a pretty aggressive mend to start. I'm gonna do that one again because that was a bad cast. Pretty aggressive mend to start. And then I might do a secondary mend. I call it the fixer mend. So there's my first mend. Second mend is just mending the very back of the line. Just like that. Oh, that feels good. Swing's really starting to slow down. It's starting to get into the goods. On these cold, late October, November, December days, you know, sunlight is a good thing. This water's cold, mid 40s, sometimes low 40s as we get later in the season. That sunlight will warm the water up five degrees. That's a big advantage. So while steelheaders like cloud cover, I don't like cloud cover in, in late fall. I want sun. I want the water to warm up. Really helps swing in the fly. So I got 10 feet of T14 on. You know, and really in this upper part, I can't have a heavy enough sink tip, but when you pick a sink tip, you kind of got to find that happy medium, especially if you're fishing a whole run. Sometimes I'll, if I got multiple rods in the boat, I might fish one, one setup in the top of the run and switch to another setup in the bottom. In this case, 10 feet of T14 and a lead eye is kind of the happy medium as I fish through this run. Remember, we're looking for the aggressive fish, fish that wants to bite. The fish that wants to bite, you know, you're starting to split hairs when you go from T11 to T14 to T17 as far as sink rate. So I don't get too hung up on the sink tip, but I want to be as close as I can. I want, depending on the conditions, the best sink tip fly combination for the spot. In this spot, by the time I get halfway down, T14's fishing the way I want it to. 
and it's fishing well on the best part of the run. Now as far as casting angles, I really don't have much of a choice because of the steep bank I'm wading on. But even if I did, I would still cast quartering down in this situation. If I cast straight across, this fast water is going to create a huge belly, which I'd have to mend, mend, mend to fix. So if I quarter it down, one aggressive mend, my fixer mend, and I got a good swing going. Again, after I mend, I'm just going to keep my rod up and out. It'll just help slow my swing down, and it'll keep my my shooting line off this fast current. And then as it starts to come across and slow down, I'll, I'll, I will put my rod down because I want my shooting line to catch this current so the swing comes all the way around. And I just have my finger on the line so I feel what's happening. I don't want it pinched off. I want it nice and loose. You fish a fly that has a little trailing hook, which 99% of them do that are over two inches long. Make sure you check that thing once in a while. That thing will tangle with the top of your fly. You might go through a whole run with a hook that's not where it should be. Check it once in a while, it just happens. Just happened to me.